Aloha everyone, this is June 8th and 9th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We begin June 8th back in Kapoho. The coastal community has been utterly devastated over the previous days by the ocean entry from Fisher 8. However, by this point, the primary activity of the ocean entry is shifting further to the south and away from the remaining homes in the Kapoho farm lots. The Bay of Kapoho has essentially been transformed into a small point as lava has inundated the entire bay and protruded out from the existing shoreline as well as from the new ocean entry and the lava delta that it's established. We have here an upwelling of water and these are pretty common around the ocean entry. The upwellings reach out about a thousand feet or up to a thousand feet from the new coastline. And these indicate that the lava is being transported underneath the surface of the ocean before it is emerging and being met with the seawater, which is then creating these convection zones. And these are the main indicator that the ocean entry is happening not only at the surface where we can see it, but under the water as well. Back up slope at the eruptive vent to Fisher 8, we find not much has changed. It's been pretty consistent for the past couple of days, and that's going to be the status quo going forward for the next couple of weeks as well. Very high output from the fissure, very high gas emissions, not only from the fissure 8 itself, but also the previous fissures, which have not been erupting, but are still emitting high amounts of gas as well, adding on to that cumulative total of SO2 emissions. The fountain height of fissure 8 has fluctuated only between 160 and 220 feet. Hey, hey Uncle Keone. If anybody want food, we got hot food over here. This is the Puho Onuo Puna, also known as the hub. This was where the lava refugees from Leilani and Kapoho and all the other impacted areas went in order to get the support that they needed. Uh, from anything from a hot meal to the utensils or supplies that they might need or left behind to the emotional support to get through this trying time. The community is also coming together in other ways. One of those ways is the building of 20 tiny homes for those that have lost in the eruption and have no place to go. These homes are being led by Gilbert, but also being built primarily with the support of the Hawaii National Guard. It's really a amazing sight to see Everybody coming together and putting in work to try and help those that have lost. This awesome. is awesome. That's one thing that for me, it's sense of security. You know, it just feels like home. Right. Somebody can turn on like to it. Really feels, give these people life on home. June 8th, around 10.30 p.m. One of the final things I remember from June 8th is the lifting of the curfew that had been placed on Leilani Estates by the county. Now, the, there's two separate systems in place. One is the placard system, which meant that you had to establish residency inside the subdivision in order to gain access to it. The second was an overlapping curfew that even if you had a placard, if you showed up too late to the checkpoint to try and get back to your home, you just weren't allowed in that night. June 8th ends with a look at the thermal map produced by USGS, this time focusing just on the ocean entry in Kapoho, and it shows some of the expansion to the south. Transitioning into June 9th, we start to see that there's some minor alterations to the eruptive site in Leilani Estates. First, the eruptive vent of Fisher 8, the fountains coming from it, have decreased in size a little bit. They're now down to about 120, 140 feet. As the eruptive vents of Fisher 9 and Fisher 24 have shown incandescence that might indicate some future activity at either of those two spots. We're on board with a USGS drone as it takes off from the Y of Poohiki Road and Highway 132, looking across the lava channel with PGV on the right down towards the ocean entry. From the ocean entry, we can see this steam plume coming up off of it. Now the steam plume is slightly diminished from the previous days, but that's not really due to the volcanic activity changing. It's more due to the changing and variable weather patterns as well as the fluctuation of the dew point. So on this one day, we end up 
visually seeing a reduced plume. Here we see a lava channel overflow, and this is in the area of the Y. These overflows are channel building events, as we've discussed previously, but they do have the propensity to start fires when they get into some of the drier grasses, like the sugar cane seen here. Now, this cane grass isn't entirely dry, it's still relatively green, and it burns pretty slowly. It smolders, but the fire is able to make some advancement of the lava overtopping the channel and making it all the way down to the untouched vegetation below has not been a rare occurrence. You can see by all the lighter gray little looking flows coming off of the lava channel, just how common of occurrence this is. Now the thing about it is, is how big is the fire? That's really the determining factor if an emergency response is warranted or not. The fact that a fire has been started is somewhat expected. Um, it's just the severity of the fire. Is it going to threaten homes or is it just going to slowly smolder itself out? There is one thing here with Fisher 8 I haven't acknowledged yet, and that's the little collection area just outside the mouth of Fisher 8 on the east side. And this collection area is going to be a prominent feature throughout the eruption. One of the surprising things to me is just how deep it ends up being. Once the lava drains away is when we finally get to see just how deep it is. And it's got to be 80 feet, 70 feet deep. It's just a sheer vert wall once you get to see it after the lava drains. That'll do it for June 8th and 9th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode we saw the continuation of the eruption of Fisher 8 and the ocean entry in Kapoho Bay, as well as touched upon some of the relief efforts that the community is organizing in order to help lava refugees make it through this time. Thank you for joining me. Until the next one, aloha.